The covering letter Terenim Nancias uh, follows a work that precedes this by seven years called Covering Letter. And it's a sort of second covering letter in a sense. So covering letter Terenim Nancias, uh, unlike its uh, predecessor uh, covering letter, isn't a letter from one person to another. You know, the previous covering letter was a letter written by uh, Mahatma Gandhi to Adolf Hitler just five weeks before the Second World War and takes the form of a mist, uh, like a screen of mist uh, in an illuminated, um, in, a, in a dark space. And to me, in, in fact, at some level, the first covering letter was really a letter going from one kind of human consciousness to another kind of human consciousness. Really, the um, um, perhaps the greatest proponent of peace, writing to one of the most brutal perpetrators of violence, sort of cohabiting the planet at that same moment in time. But uh, in covering letter Terranum Nuncius, uh, once again, the epistolary, the, the, the act of writing a letter, the act of correspondence is at the center of the work. But in this instance, the letter goes from us as a planetary entity to the other, the recipient, and the unknown, uncertain recipient is really uh, an interstellar spacefaring alien unknown to us. So the other is the absolute unknown. Um, and to me, I think that's really the heart of the work, really this, this need to, to speak, to reach out. I think Ternam Nancius, in a way, um, is that question really of when the other is the absolute unknown and the afar, uh, what does that do to our sense of the divided self that slowly has to, at some point, uh, unite into a singular figure to be the center of the letter. So all the images and sounds that make up the work, uh, what sit here on a, on a round table, are essentially uh, the 116 images that were hoisted by NASA atop the Voyager 1 and 2 space missions in, in 1977. Um, a set of images curated and put together by uh, Frank Drake and, and Carl Sagan um, that become collectively possibly the only images that, that have traveled this far in a sense that they are now in what many might think of as the outskirts of the solar system, it, essentially in interstellar space and are hurtling away from us at some 17 kilometers per second. And uh, the images on the record uh, remain like evidence of our own existence uh, in a situation where uh, the golden record and the voyagers are most likely to outlive us as a species, uh, the, the outlive our planet, outlive the sun, uh, the solar system, and perhaps even the collision of the Milky Way galaxy with Andromeda, all of which have dates and, and possible moments when uh, when the when they go extinct, but also there's this diagram which is almost in the epistolary mode. You have a written address, you know, the letter writing. You write an address where you want to get your letter back. And here, there's a diagram that that's projected on the wall, which is essentially a diagram that comes from the top of the the golden record itself, uh, an indication of where the species might find us, our location, in relationship to the multiple pulsars, which are assumed to be. 14 or 15, but now we know there are a few hundred, and clearly based on this diagram, there's no likelihood that any alien's gonna find us. So even our own location is uncertain to us. Our own certitude about where we exist is unknown to us. Um, the third element in the work is this, is the sound that percolates the space, which are essentially greetings to the universe in 55 languages that one might hear sitting on a bench like the one I'm sitting on, which is essentially a shape like the hands of the doomsday clock. Uh, a clock that was proposed soon after the making of the first bomb, where the scientists who made the bomb made an announcement saying it's seven minutes to midnight. But taking that, that number seriously, the scientists, mostly Nobel laureates, reset the clock every year. And as of 2019, it was uh, two minutes to midnight due to bioterrorism, uh, uh, nuclear threat, 
uh, artificial intelligence um, uh, and Donald Trump, a sort of a reason was added where a single individual was named uh, as, a, as a possible likelihood of threat. But I think the, the idea of our own extinction, our mortality, us and the other, a search for a vocabulary, I think all of these ideas sort of make up a covering letter Terran Amancius. So, in a way, this piece, Ellipsis, actually hadn't begun as a single work. Um, not until eight or nine months ago did I even think of them, them as in the multiple images that now make up the work, to be part of a single, single chorus or a single, a single accordion. I mean, I often think of this as like a, like an opened up accordion diary. Um, they all began actually sort of alongside other paintings that I was doing between uh, 2018 and 2019. And a lot of the images actually began in the early part of 2018, where I would actually have almost like little speculative puddles of abstraction on on canvases that uh, that took maybe about like another nine or ten months before I would sometimes place two or three pieces together like triptychs or quadruptychs and and then there would be some relationship but I never really took that that as seriously until you know, there was a moment in the studio where I just decided to sort of lay them out together and suddenly they began to feel like there's something emerging and also it began to challenge me to think of the relationship between all of these forms that had emerged across months so ellipsis really is a bit like the three dots you know in a sentence you know they this, this some sort of continuity uh, or elimination you know there's some absences or this um, the images come together sometimes they've begun as individual images but when i look at the work i feel that many images have actually appeared because of other images so they actually like like bridges that allow you to move across one might think of as like an archipelago like islands of imagery and then other islands of imagery appear to to help you navigate across them and then they speak to each other and then something else unforeseen begins to emerge <laughs> 